that's nuts. I never in a million. They don't give Oscars to people like me. Come they on. do? No, they don't. I've actually never received an award for anything that I've ever, it's not a joke. Uh, you can laugh later, but don't laugh now. I'm sensitive, I'm an actor. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Madison Harnish. Welcome back to my blue kitchen for another crazy video. If you enjoy deep dives and like to analyze, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And well, let's get into the video. Today's video is going to be all about Jared Leto's cult that he started. I have no idea what this is. It's a little bit bizarre. Some people feel like it's a marketing ploy. Some people think it's an actual cult. Some people think that it's Jared Leto and his narcissism in full form. I don't really know what it is, so we're gonna dive into it today and figure that out together. I haven't heard much about Jared Leto lately, so before we dive into his weird cult thing, festival thing, before we dive into that, let's check out a vlog so we can see what Jared Leto has been up to lately. Let's talk about the last 40 days. What a 40 days it's been. I emerged from the desert after a two week silent meditation. Silent meditation for two weeks, okay. With no communication with the outside world, the entire planet was shut down and life hasn't been the same since. How are y'all doing? I found out all communication is now done on something called Zoom. Met some screaming people, which is a compliment. I learned how to make rice. First of all, I learned how to burn rice. Then I learned how to make rice. Wrote some music, played some guitar, launched the Jared Leto Cinema Club with Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Moved on to Tiger King with Joe Exotic. Became Joe Exotic. Meanwhile, me during quarantine, it's like wake up at 10 a.m realize there's nothing to do, check my phone, in bed, then maybe go back to sleep, maybe decide to get up and eat some food, maybe decide to film a video. Like that's my <laughs> routine. Go to bed at 2 a.m., not because I'm doing things, but just because the day stretches on and on and you start to lose track of time or the, even the concept of time. Meanwhile, Jared Leto is over here like, Okay. Meditated every single day, 70 hours total, just this week. I always think it's a funny dichotomy when people claim to be like super zen and like I'm super zen, I meditate, I go on these retreats, I'm just like spiritually above you. Started a book club, cooked some more food, took pictures of my food, shared pictures of said food, got a thousand submissions for the community charity tea, did the quarantine with all profits going to partners in health, walked around my house, celebrated our last album, America, launched a new 2020 list tea with all profits going to charity. Oh yeah, we got it in pink too. Did a wardrobe change on Instagram Live, celebrated Easter in quarantine, dabbled with TikTok. Wait a minute. Meditated some more. Okay, first off, very impressive, all the stuff that Jared Leto's doing. He's definitely a very active person and I commend him for that. Lots of goals, charities, all that kind of stuff. This video is not a Jared Leto is a bad person video, but, but I also want to point out how slightly out of touch he is. I know a lot of people have talked about celebrities going onto social media or even talking during quarantine and how they just feel very out of touch with reality and what the rest of the world is dealing with. And I definitely think Jared Leto is one of those people because most of us, this is not realistic. I mean, let's be real. Most of us during quarantine were extremely nervous about losing our jobs. I actually lost a job during quarantine. That stuff is happening. And then Jared Leto's over here like, I'm trying on clothes and cooking pasta. That's great, that's great. So that's my quarantine 
updates be safe be sound stay home for now the way that jared leto looks into the camera too reminds me of that meme where it's like blue eyes take selfies like let me know what you've been up to in the comments below and to be continued okay so that's what jared leto has been up to during quarantine but if you remember watching the beginning of that whole vlog he mentions his 12 day or two week meditation retreat and that's where this video is gonna get weird because we are talking about the jared leto cult music festival fire festival number two so rumors of jared leto starting a cult happened back in 2019 when reports came out that jared leto was walking around in this white dress looking like jesus like really similar and invited his fans to join him on an isolated island it's all majority white people walking around with white clothing and it's just creepy the mars island cult symbol is a triangle with a line through it members will even get that tattooed on them while they're staying at mars island and here is the official description of mars island Mars Island is a three-night, all-inclusive festival experience. Relax and restore with yoga amongst the trees. Take a dip in the pool, catch a midnight screening, or gaze at the stars, and catch two intimate performances with 30 seconds to Mars. Mars Island is an experience like no other. While I do think going on a trip to an island would be really cool, it still seems kind of scary to be trapped on an island with a bunch of strangers and everyone's wearing white. Like this could be like a horror movie film. Like it just sounds really creepy and scary to me. And all those people have to use the restroom, they have to take showers, they have to eat. It's a lot of resources that an island has to provide in like a short span of time. So here's a video of the island. So here's the other thing. The costs to Mars Island are insane. insane. Like insane. So Mars Island, which is happening this August 2020, which I'm also like, is the coronavirus not a thing anymore? Like, okay. And the cheapest package, the, the cheapest, cheapest package, package that this entire experience offers is the Stargazer South Camp package, which is currently priced at $1,499 for three days. So you're staying in a tent on a hot, humid island and going to two concerts, and that's worth one thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars i mean i get if you're a diehard fan and this is like your favorite band ever like i can understand why this would be exciting and like an opportunity you'd want to jump on but i'm also just like from the perspective of the band and jared leto himself i'm just like really you're gonna charge your diehard fans one thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars to stay on an island in like these tents and everything i just okay okay on the opposite end of the spectrum the vip daydreamer package is currently six thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars and this vip package is located in sun lodges that are completely weatherproof lockable lockable so were the tents not lockable i could see this type of thing maybe maybe being reasonable with like multiple 
artists and multiple bands where you're like it's a genuine music festival but to do all of this to only see 30 seconds to mars is definitely a little bit strange the prices are insane that's literally like four months of rent for me into a three-day trip to an island Jared Leto is really making bank with this. I also can't help but think of how weird of a marketing tactic it is to call a luxury music festival experience a cult because that's really what he's doing. Instead of saying, come pay thousands and thousands of dollars to go to my luxury music festival experience, which kind of gives reminders of like fire festival. Instead of saying that, He's saying, this is a cult, I'm a leader, this is a crazy spiritual experience. I'm not sure if they're doing that to like try and justify the price or to do a big marketing ploy. All of a sudden everyone's curious, is this a cult? What's really going on here? And people actually want to pay money for the experience because of that? I don't really know. Because to me, when I see this is a cult and you have to pay $1,000, $400 to $6,000 to have this experience. I'm like, actually all of those things sound awful and terrible and I will avoid all of those. So cult followers are referred to as the echelon. Members of the echelon also use the hashtag you wouldn't understand, which sounds like a weird mix of like an angsty teen. Like you don't understand mom, like you wouldn't understand, which is fitting for 30 Seconds to Mars. Sorry if you like the music. I even like some of their songs, but it is pretty angsty teen type of music. And then also like a cult. You just don't get it. Come join us, we'll explain everything to you. So let's watch this video that explains what is the echelon. These are all just random words. I kind of feel like it's a lazy way of putting together a cult video. <laughs> the breakaway movement did a better job than this because you just see fans that are just way too excited and then it's just like emotions, support, understanding. Also, I love how they add support, financial support. Give me your money. <laughs> You heard it here, guys. Jared Leto is uniting the world with an island trip that you have to pay thousands of dollars to go to. The world is united. Thank you, Jared Leto. We couldn't have done it without him. No more problems. Everything solved. That's when you get into really creepy cult territory. When people start crying because they're happy to be on an island where they paid thousands of dollars. I mean, I would be happy to be that detached from reality, but... Also, random question, but has anyone ever actually cried tears of happiness before? Like, I've seen it in movies and books and now here, but I've never experienced that emotion in my life where I'm like so happy that I start crying. I've never experienced that before. Can I also just say, weirdly, I feel like Jared Leto in 30 Seconds to Mars is actually making their fan base look really bad. Showing these video clips of their fans just looking so over the top excited for like a cult recruitment video it makes them look like these blind followers instead of just people going to a concert and having a good time so by making your fans look like cult followers you're kind of making them look ridiculous and you're charging them an over the top amount it feels like you're kind of treating your fans poorly and massively massively pro profiting from them while trying to tell them that it's this connecting experience where we're all families it just feels manipulative to me and also like they just genuinely don't care about their fan base and how they make their fan base look just as long as they're bringing them in cash and getting that outrage marketing.
jumping up and down with their hand up in the air. That's what people do at a concert. But then when you twist the narrative into all of a sudden like this is a cult, it makes it look so creepy. example, if we look at K-pop stands, I think that K-pop does an incredible job of respecting their fans and appreciating their fans. They understand that their fans have so much power, which the K-pop community does. It's incredible. It's insane. The things that they're able to move and change when they all come together and K-pop bands respect that. They understand that they provide a service to their fans and go above and beyond to deliver that, but still respect their fans as individuals. And it feels like this whole cult echelon 30 seconds to Mars thing is the complete opposite of that. They don't respect their fans at all, are trying to make them look like blind cult followers. It's just this like fake way of trying to almost create the devotion that K-pop stands have with 30 seconds to Mars, but they're not doing it in the right way at all. In my opinion, K-pop fans and stands definitely let me know um, more about that in the comments below if you have any input on that as well. It feels like Jared Leto was aware of how dedicated his fans were to the band and decided to further profit off of that by creating a cult-like experience. The hashtag you wouldn't understand causes fans to separate themselves and create this us versus them mentality. So anytime their actions or what they're doing is questioned, they can just say, well, you don't understand and go further and further down the hole of devotion. The band once even held a competition where the prize was sleeping at night in Jared Leto's bed with him. Like that's so creepy. In 2013, he even said, if people like 30 Seconds to Mars, they really, really like it. We have this cult, this family, these believers. They have even specifically requested that fans get tattoos in their honor, which are the triangles, the symbols. Not only do they have the Mars Island experience, they also have Camp Mars, which charges $999 for two nights in Malibu. And it's only for outdoor camping where you have to bring your own tent and your own supplies. And you still pay $1,000 for two nights. Hardcore 30 Seconds to Mars fans have to pay hundreds or thousands of dollars for crumbs of what other bands would charge. For example, the band charges $900 for meet and greets. To put that into perspective, One Direction has charged $658. Rihanna only charging 116 in 2015 and Taylor Swift doesn't charge her fans at all to meet her. And yet in 2013, Jared Leto declared the band anti-greed. Anti -greed. It makes me so sad because they are obviously manipulating and taking advantage of their own fans and it's just not right. Yet they're spouting this rhetoric of like community and family and understanding when they're doing the exact opposite in their actions. So let's react to some footage of Mars Island in 2019, Camp Mars, to kind of see what the actual experience is, if it's worth it, or if it's just blatant manipulation by 30 Seconds to Mars to get as much out of their fans as possible. <laughs> Give us a kiss, you sexy beast! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! That's cringy. The way that the audience just laughs, like that was not funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> that wasn't funny. He just put on a Joker voice. He was like, haha, look at me. Joker voice. I was that guy. And everyone just laughed as if it was the funniest thing. That's creepy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> It's good to see you. Yeah! At the one and only Camp Mars. 
Isn't it beautiful in here? Yeah! yeah! Incredible. It's a little hot, but it's not that hot, right? I mean, I'm sure some of you came from places that are even much hotter. Yes. It's going to be fun. You get some food? Yeah! yeah. Okay, we got lots of good food for you. You're going to leave um, very healthy. <laughs> uh, everybody check out their rooms or their tents. Or Okay, make sure you leave your door unlocked. <laughs> you never know who's going to pay you a visit. <laughs> He's dressing in all white and trying to act like this prophet, Jesus-like character. And yet he gets up to talk to his followers and he's like, <laughs> so what about the weather? Ha ha, I was the Joker once. That's funny. Wow, so enlightening. My brain is just like been expanded 10 times. Um, <laughs> let me go spend thousands of dollars now. I'm hooked. This is definitely an experience I have to have in my life. As you can see, it's already white night for me. Every day is white night. Every day is white day. Um, so uh, tomorrow is um, white night, right? Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, okay, great. We're done. <laughs> This is literally worst, worst? This is worse than summer camps that I went to as a child. You had like the camp counselors that were like way too stoked to be there. I always felt awkward and uncomfortable the whole time, but looking back, I have to give credit to those camp counselors. They were excited to be there. And then you have Jared Leto here like, well, you guys are here and we're here. <laughs> Anybody gonna go swimming? Have, do you have your activities uh, lined up? I think if I jumped in that pool, it would get a little gross. <laughs> because everybody, we'd all jump in, it'd be too many people. We'd be like a bunch of seals over there. <laughs> Flopping out on the side. Um, if only I could say something that basic and have like a group of people laugh. Men, women aren't funny, men. If I go into a pool, I'm gonna flop around like a seal. Ha 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 ha. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Just take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Riverdi riverding? Riveting performance from Jared Leto himself as he tries to escape a bug. Okay, very few things were uncovered from that video. That was extremely boring, but also you could sense just like the tone of I really don't give a single shit about any of this in his voice. So that was lovely. But let's look at the closing ceremony from Camp Mars to see if it's any different. Shannon, you want to say anything? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it just started. Like I'm just getting ready. Okay, now we can start. We should extend it. <laughs> oh shit. If everybody pitches in a couple of dollars, I think we can work it out. <laughs> just, just a couple. Okay, remember that people paid a thousand dollars for this. You do whatever you want with your money. Like, honestly, if you got it and you want to spend it, go for it. But. And her team of uh, uh, incredible Mexicans as well that come. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. But both camp and California wouldn't be very much without Mexicans. That is for sure. 100%. We, we, we owe Mexico a great deal. And rather than building walls, we should just pave a giant, huge welcome sign and road. Come on up. We need more of you. Uh, in my opinion. Here's a video of Mars Island in 2019. So let's take a look at that. Right now. The drumming circle. People from Europe, South America, China. Oh, there's one, right? 
Ukraine, Canada, holy shit, Chile, Australia, and it's the United fucking Nations in the world's smallest backdrop. Overall, don't get me wrong, the experience does look fun. Does it look like something that I would want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on? No. Most of the time when Jared Leto's there, he's very bored and very like uninterested in the conversation. It doesn't seem like the experience that Jared Leto at least is trying to make it look like it is on social media. It's great to find your people. You know, I think we're all looking for a community where we can go to and fit in and feel like we belong, but you shouldn't have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to be a part of a community and to be a part of a group of people. If it gets to that point, then maybe someone's just taking advantage of your desire to belong to something unfortunately. The last video we'll react to is a video uploaded by a 30 Seconds to Mars fan defending Mars Island and her experiences. I'm gonna try and blur out her face. Hello YouTube and welcome to channel Anna Bella and yes this is a reaction video to the strange and somewhat disturbing allegations that Jared Leto's Mars camp slash Mars Island is a cult. Hate to disappoint you, it is totally not, because here, it was more of an adult relaxation retreat. I did a painting class and painted island. Aww, that's adorable. What I think she fails to realize with this is that Jared Leto is kind of the one calling it a cult and making his followers look bad as if they're a part of a cult for a social media scandal of sorts. As for the whole cult thing where we all stood on the cliffs that was the awkward family photo that you have on holiday people it really was it took us two hours to do that but it was the awkward family photo you know where you have to get all your relatives together only this time it was all the members that attended mars island we all got together and did a photo but that's not a call it took us two hours to gather yet we still did it even though it was painful for no apparent reason but it's not a cult also nothing made me feel like this was a cult more than this video trying to explain how it's not a cult because she's almost too defensive about it where it makes me feel like yeah this is definitely a cult it was just a relaxing holiday people that happened to have a band and the band consists of Jared Leto, who happens to be an actor, his brother Shannon, who is one of the brilliantest drummers. So I'm not really kind of getting where people are coming with like the whole cult angle thing. Yes, Jared did grow up in a commune in the 1960s, late 1960s, early 1970s, but give me a break already. You know, obviously I don't think this person deserves any hate. They're very passionate. They're very passionate about this band and this community that they feel has been formed and they had a good time and that's great but the unfortunate reality is that i just genuinely believe that 30 seconds to mars fans are being taken advantage of and being made to look ridiculous and it's by jared leto himself there's the whole aspect of the greediness of the amount that they charge for their fans. I just think a lot of it is really hypocritical and just for a marketing ploy and to further profit off of their fans, which they don't like to call fans, so echelon. Also, last thing I'll say on this topic, something is a joke until it's not. You can claim that you're participating in a cult as a joke or a practical joke, but you're still doing all of the things that a cult does. So when does a practical joke go too far or start to blur the lines and become an actual cult? And that's really all I have to say on this video. I think that there'll definitely be a really interesting conversation in the comments about personal thoughts on this and being a fan of a band and when that goes too far. So I'm definitely really excited to check out the comments of this video. I hope you guys I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe and until next time, have a good one.